the Democratic line. John, good morning. Yes, this morning, a Trump supporter was killed, was shot and killed in a drive-by in Milwaukee. I don't know if you got that news, but the people in Milwaukee are waiting for those troops to come in because they got weapons, and it's going to be a lot of bloodshed when they come. So that's all I got to say. What's that supposed to mean? So let's, now you have people on your air threatening our lives. Is that what it is, Jesse? Let's keep going to Chris, who's calling from Ocean. I don't think we should keep. I mean, you just had a caller call in and said that they're going that, that shooting Trump supporters is right. I mean, anybody who's a Democrat or independent should listen to what that gentleman just said and realize where the Democrats are in this country. They're threatening our lives. It is disgusting, it's despicable, and it's criminal. And that sounded like a threat against the president and his campaign. Welcome back, everyone. So, yeah, the other day on C-SPAN, they had screened the caller and allowed him to come on the air to threaten federal officers and Trump supporters with violence. When the guest objected, the C-SPAN host simply tried to change the subject for obvious reasons. Sure, this is just one random guy out of millions of people who call into C-SPAN. The people calling into C-SPAN probably aren't the most stable, or shall we say, not the most extroverted people. However, it just goes to show how increasingly mainstream openly calling for violence or in support of violence being perpetuated by people the media calls peaceful protesters, but that are actually far left extremists of varying stripes. I mean, you got socialists, you got communists, you got anarchists, you got anarcho-communists, and a ton of useful idiots who don't seem to know any better. They obviously feel emboldened because they see the media actively running cover for them, constantly walking on eggshells and spinning everything in the most positive light, despite what we're all seeing with our own eyes on the internet. And I gotta tell you, what I'm seeing isn't giving me great hope for what's to come. Between communist uprisings and the coronavirus, our economy is sure to take a big hit. Please, just take a moment to hear about this special free offer for my subscribers from Orion Metal Exchange. How far will your US dollar go once we tally up all the debt accumulated in the fight against coronavirus? How will government mandated business shutdowns affect the economy moving forward? My friends, uncertainty is the enemy investors and savers alike need to guard against. Now is the time to take action. Protect yourself, protect your financial future. Did you know that it took nearly eight years for the markets to recover after the 2008 housing bubble crash? Yet during the crash of 2008, gold and silver surged to all-time highs. Do you really have eight years to wait for a recovery? Bank of America, Goldman Sachs and Citigroup all see gold soaring, forecasting $2,000 an ounce for gold. Orion Metal Exchange is Consumer Affairs top rated gold IRA dealer. Call today and request a free investment kit below. Mention Drone Tech Politics and get a free one ounce silver coin for qualified retirement account holders. Must be over 40 to qualify. Call 866 915 five zero five three and get your free investment guide today so i spent all saturday night watching these terrorist actions across the country and what i saw does not match at all with what the media reported in Aurora, these people actually tried to stop all the traffic on one of the main roads through Texas, which is a popular tactic of these scumbags, when one of these cars tried to get through and was shot at by one of these peaceniks, which caused the car to speed away. I'm sure you'll be surprised to find out that the only people these idiots shot were other protesters. This is all after the larger group of protesters had issues of their own. Hundreds of people took over I-225, and at one point, a car on the highway forced its way through the crowd. At that time, witnesses told us that one protester pulled out a gun and tried to shoot out the tires of the car and hit another protester in the leg. What right do these people have to stop traffic and then start making demands? They have no right, but the media acts like this is just normal for violent extremists to stop your car and then start shouting orders at you. Demands that are met with violence if you don't comply. Oh, the irony. And let's not forget that Black Lives Matter leaders have openly stated that there will be violence in response to their demands not being met. And you said, burn it down. You said, burn it down. It's time. So that makes me think I, that I you want to burn it's, it down. I said, if this country 
if this country doesn't give us what we want, then we will burn down this system and replace it. Just look at this protester's Twitter rant where she brags about stopping citizens in their cars and then giving them demands that she apparently thinks must be obeyed under threat of violence. Tonight, we led a siren noise pollution protest where we blocked off the streets of Georgetown. Okay, you're already contradicting yourself. That's a lot more than just a noise protest. As we blocked off streets, we demanded that people turn around. This was a minor inconvenience for this fluent white neighborhood. Oh, I'm sorry. How do you know what these people are doing and what right do you have to stop them or give them any demands whatsoever? As we blocked streets, certain drivers got annoyed and attempted to maneuver their way around us. Well, yeah, people tend to do that when crazy mobs are surrounding their vehicles and shouting orders at them. This particular white woman tried to cut through a gas station. Me and a couple other protesters stood in front of her car and demanded she turn around. Instead, she steps on the gas. And you'll notice the skin color of the people they targeted is a central part of her rationalization for why she's allowed to do this. So the cops show up and of course they help the citizen against the thugs who are mobbing her and this is what she has to say finally cops come but instead of arresting this woman or asking for her id registration etc they turn towards us and began pushing us we are begging them to arrest this woman who tried to run over protesters repeatedly Oh, you're a criminal stopping free people from continuing on their way unmolested. The only people acting unlawfully are the protesters. Another incident occurred when a mob surrounded a car that was trying to go on their way when one of the protesters pointed his AK-47 at the car to which the driver responded with his firearm, killing the AK-47 armed protester. I would suggest that all you peaceful protesters take note of this incident because it's a microcosm for how all of this is going to go if violence continues. This is just classic terroristic behavior, yet the media runs cover for them. Just look at these stories and how they gloss over all the inconvenient information. This is the ABC News story about this incident. Austin police identify protester shot killed by driver. Police have identified an armed protester who was shot and killed by a person who had driven into a crowd at a demonstration in Texas. Okay, first of all, the guy didn't drive into a crowd. He was driving on the road trying to continue on his way when the mob stopped him. So you got to scroll all the way down to the end of the story before you get some facts that they're obviously trying to candy coat. Manley said the driver and several witnesses told police Foster approached the driver's side of the vehicle and pointed an assault rifle at the driver. Manley said the driver called 911 and reported the incident. That person was taken into custody but later released. Right, he was released because he did nothing wrong, something you would never know if you just read the headline of this story. The second round of shots was fired by protesters who witnessed the shooting. The shooter fired at the car while it drove away. That person was also taken into custody, but later released. So they released the protesters who were shooting at the car? What in the hell is going on here? Are we all just living at the mercy of this mob now? And just think about it. While the media is running cover for terrorists and the police are letting them off without charges, business owners who just want to feed their families are being arrested by swarms of police with canine units. Yet when we were talking about the actually peaceful anti-lockdown protests, the media had nothing but negative things to say about them, calling them terrorists and racists. Those people are out there complaining because they don't have haircuts? Who the hell do you think you are? And if you're so upset about it, you should be mad at the president. And you're protesting against, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're slapping the faces of the people who are the healthcare workers who put their lives on the line every day because you want a haircut, you want to go play golf, you're concerned about, of course you're concerned about your business. Tell the president that. And you're out there with with um, with guns, with with weapons strapped to your chest. What is wrong with people? I don't understand. What is wrong with people? Stay at home. It's now just sort of a a merry caravan. It is worth pointing out that it has been entirely peaceful. Sometimes angry, but entirely peaceful. Bottle zone. Uh, which is not uncommon. Entirely peaceful. Bottle thrown. Uh, which is not uncommon. So there is some of that. The fact is, our media is gaslighting. 
The fact is, our media is gaslighting the country in an attempt to protect Democrats' chances in November. They all know this far left, Democrat party, media, Hollywood, NFL, NBA, MLB, corporation endorsed violence will blow back on them in the form of a Trump victory. So their only chance here is just to straight up lie every single day until the election. And like I said, these terrorists know the media is covering for them. In Portland, a protester shouted, quote, we're winning the propaganda war. No doubt about that. When these people march around with hammer and sickles using Roman war tactics, yet the media and Democrats call what we see with our own eyes a myth. It's true. There's violence across the whole country. Do you disavow the violence from Antifa? That's happening in Portland right now. There's that, that's, riots. That, that's a myth that's being spread only in Washington, D.C. About Antifa in Portland? Yes. It Sir, there's, there's videos everywhere there online. There's fires and riots. There's th they're throwing fireworks at uh, federal officers. DHS is there. Look online. It gets crazy, Mr. Nadler. I'm a bit of a broken record on this subject, but this can't end well. Honestly, I've been really surprised by how patient the rest of the country has been in the face of all this violence, but that won't last forever. I believe we're starting to see that patience run out, and when it does, the blowback will be severe. That's all I have for today. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you want to support this channel, you can find all those links in the description or pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.